Well, I received a new Gamma Scout. This is actually the pack from my old Gamma Scout. And this is the one from the shiny new Gamma Scout I got. Why did I get a new Gamma Scout, you may ask? Well, the thing is that um, the Gamma Scout had an issue with measuring really high levels of radiation, even though it claimed it could measure up to a thousand microsieverts per hour in a reliable way, but instead it crashed all the time because the high voltage could no longer be supplied. So, um, as, a letter, as of a letter of, uh, I think it was May 2010, they told me that they had actually fixed this issue now, and that their Gamma Scout could measure a thousand microsieverts per hour reliably. So, of course I'm going to test this out, because I've actually got the equipment to produce a thousand microsieverts reading, which they don't seem to have at the German Gamma Scout facility. It's kind of weird, but uh, when I contacted Dr. Miro personally, he actually told me that they used to um, disassemble some smoke detectors and actually test the Gamma Scout with that, but they were no longer allowed to do so because the government forbid them to do so. Well, it's not exactly professional to disassemble a smoke detector if you're selling a professional product like this. But anyway, <laughs> if you don't even have the license for this and get in trouble for it, I don't know what to say about that. But still, now they're using Pitch Blender, obviously. But um, the good thing is that they seem to have some calibration facility and some guy who does the calibration. And he's also got cesium-137 and stuff that is actually, um, yeah, the proper way to calibrate the Gamma Scout. So that's good news. And apart from that, we'll see what this new baby can actually do. So the pack is shiny and new. Uh, we'll see what's inside. First of all, there's a manual. Okay, let's compare that to the old manual. Yep, that looks more professional. And also, um, where was that? That was here on the old manual. It says Mist Radioaktive Strahlung Zuverlässig and in English Reliable Radiation Measurement, which is not at all a translation of that phrase. So, and uh, it carried on throughout this manual that the English translation was really, really poorly done. And uh, I seem to have increased that in the new manual. So, that's that's good. The new manual also has a better structure and stuff as well. So, I think they kind of did well on updating the manual. So, let's see what they say about the maximum level this can measure. Okay, so this is the old manual, right? And it says right here, calibrated scale up to a thousand microsieverts per hour. And this new one says to 50 microsieverts per hour. Well, they actually put that down because, um, yeah, they couldn't live up to the expectations of their of their customers. So, yeah, they put that down to 50 microsieverts an hour because they noticed, uh, it crashes at a thousand microsieverts per hour, so let's hope that it's just an old manual and the device is actually capable of going beyond that, because otherwise that would really suck. What's also fancy about this, as you see, this is the new manual, old manual, so the layout is better, you gotta give them that. But what's also really fancy is stuff like, stuff like this, the operating range of the Gamma Scout is used to control X-ray impacted at home and on the job at home. Well, that's interesting, okay. A very strong X-ray load above a thousand microsieverts per hour. Nuclear core conditions cannot be measured with this technique. What the crap? Nuclear core conditions? First of all, what is that? Do they mean a nuclear reactor core? And a thousand microsieverts per hour? That's nothing. A dental X-ray head will give off ten sieverts per hour. You know? A thousand microsieverts are one millisievert. A thousand millisieverts are one sievert. And a dental x-ray head gives off ten sieverts per hour. And with other devices it's even more. And a reactor core? Oh come on. First of all, x-rays? Uh, what the... You gotta be kidding me. Well, anyway. I would be called gamma rays anyway, but... Okay. Let's, let's put this aside and just take a look at the machine of that, seriously. That's just so weird. Oh, look. We've got a shiny new software. 
Well, finally, because it did never work in Windows Vista, and that kind of pissed me off, so let's see what happens. Okay, so let's connect this shiny new gamma scan to the USB port now. Yay, it's connected, and Vista even recognized it. The drivers have been installed, so that's great. Let's run the software. I'll choose the port. Yeah, we're using USB. What? No USB port is initialized yet. Searching a Gamma Scout? Please connect the Gamma Scout. Well, I've done this to all ports, even the back ports, not using a hub or anything. But it doesn't work. Wait, what's this? It says November 2008. They haven't even revised the software yet. So, well, the software does not work on Vista. Vista has been out for a long time, and the Gamma Scout software does not work on Vista as of yet. At least not on the 64-bit uh, version I'm running. But I suppose it'll be the same for any, if you know. If you've got a Gamma Scout and know about this in a 32-bit version, let me know. But anyway, let's get to my dear old friend this really, really old laptop, like an Intel Centrino, if you still know that. <laughs> it is in dual boot and has a nice, well, nice, it still has a Windows 2K on, anyway. So, um, let's see what that gives. Okay, got my scout on the laptop, and where's that old software here? Let's see, read data from Gamma Scout. Oh, uh, please activate the PC connection button. I will do so by pressing here. Yep, PC on it says. It just had some kind of dashes before. So PC on is better, but why does it click all the time? It's like having a clicker on. And you're told not to have the clicker on all that much because it eats a battery. Why, why don't you just have it in silent mode and enable the PC connection anyway? What's so hard about doing that? Oh well. Anyway, let's not waste the battery indeed, and click on this. I hate touchpads, sorry for the delays. And read the data. Which takes a lot of time, I have to admit. Okay, so we're done. It tells us to go back into normal mode, and I'm doing that. And clicking OK here. And then clicking Calculate. Calculate the data, we got that, we're gonna save the data just the desktop because it doesn't matter and I'm gonna show them in a graphical display it's just, it looks really old fashioned, I don't know you can somehow navigate through it it has a whole left mouse button and zoom out zoom in, whatever, I gotta do this way or something we gotta go down here and yeah, it will zoom, but now it's totally somewhere else. And I need to go back, and well, and that produces a shitload of lag. Okay, now if I want to zoom in here, ah, no, that didn't work. I still didn't. Now I'm trying to zoom in. Uh, well, so the software really isn't good. It's of absolutely no use I'd say because I mean a graph like that you can draw that with a free open office easily so um, actually we're gonna have a look at this one this is actually the text file now uh, this used to calculate the graphical display there as well and yep it's a good clean text file as I said the software is absolutely useless um, it doesn't work with all versions of Windows it still does, not even with the most common ones, like Vista. Vista has been out for a long time. Um, but, yeah, the text file is still great, and you can make a very good graph out of that if you've got Excel or if you've got OpenOffice or any any software like that. And um, so I'd say the software still gets a rating of 2 out of 5 stars from me, because um, it creates a nice and easy-to-read text file, at least, which you can just import into different software.